Most people want to know where our secret fishing spots are. You'd be surprised to know it's not always about the spot, but what is happening at the time. Spearfishing has plenty of secrets as well, and Darren shows you how to make a spot fire. And Kirk shows you that early mornings and a subtle approach can be the way to catch the big ones. Fantastic. One of my biggest tips for anyone to enjoy more success in fishing is to understand fish movements, especially bait fish, because if you find the bait, big fish will be close by. Hi, and welcome to Fishy Business. And we're up to Fishy Business straight away today. I've come out with my good mate, John Eichelsheim, and what we're fishing is, oh, shame. <laughs> John lost his, I've still got mine. It's a pretty much an annual event now. We get a bit of a, what we call an anchovy run, around the Haraki Gulf and in the inner islands of the Haraki Gulf. At the moment we're at Motutapu and um, the fishing is just berserk. There's fish everywhere. With the fish eating so many anchovies, they're in really good nick and full of fight. Beautiful big ocean run kawai gorging himself on anchovies. So I used a little quarter ounce, very lightweight jig head, motor oil colour Z-Man. Perfect for this sort of fishing. Looks just like an anchovy. Go. <laughs> Little snapper on the fly. Snapper will feed well up off the bottom when chasing bait they fish. They're big to give you a great fun on the fly, aren't they? It's a great great fun. Sport. Hit really hard. Oh. There we go. Yeah, illegal fish, but we'll probably let him go. Yeah, I think we'll let this one go, Adam. See how we get on with it. I'm going to rig my fly right up because John's having heaps of fun. <laughs> So you can see that that's what the kahawai and snapper and kingies are feeding on, those little anchovies. That's why flies and small lures work really, really well. Your sounder is a really useful tool, as it will show you where the baitfish schools are and if snapper are present on the bottom, and if kahawai and kingfish are holding, at what depth. Keep a close eye on the seabirds, as they will tell you a lot by the way they're behaving. Gotta love the sort of fishing job. It's just... funny how little control you actually have. <laughs> All these fish are doing. Oh, oh, nice jump! Yeah, this is great. You've got to be prepared to move around the boat quickly when the fishing is full on. So you can do this all day, except your arms get too tired. <laughs> there you go. You can have that corner if you want. <laughs> yeah. I'm just swinging on this one, and he's not giving up. So tough, aren't they? So tough. Oh, go back the other way again. Oh. When a fish jumps, pointing your rod at it can reduce the chance of it getting off the hook. Yep. No, no, it's all good. Oh. One on the fly, one on the soft bait. I think I beat John on the, on the fly rod that time, John. Yeah, just, <laughs> that straight pull. Yeah. The psycho squid lure fly strikes again. Each time you catch a fish on the fly, you need to make sure you give it a clean, oops, and um, straighten out all the fur and feathers so it's swimming straight. See how that one's all messed up? If they're not swimming straight, they don't tend to eat them that well. We always net our fish to reduce handling and to lift them into the boat. Don't try and lift a big kahawai using a light rod, as this is a recipe for disaster and broken tackle. Go, John! Fatty, eh? Oops! 
Good save. We got that on camera too. Quick save, that one. That'll show in the highlights, John. <laughs> I think it's pretty important to, to also say fly casting is not hard. Most people can master it within about an hour and once you've hooked a fish on a fly rod, whether it be a, a, a trout or a snapper or a carwai or a kingfish, you will be hooked for life. It's just so much fun. And casting's fun as well. Flies are retrieved in short strips to imitate the bait fish. I don't even know if this one's legal. But... That's the thing, even um, average sized fish like this give you a good a good account for themselves on this sort of tackle. It's hard to concentrate, but there's so much going on around us. Oh well, probably a, a keepable fish, but. Uh, there if you want to measure it. We'll let him go, I think. I'm sure we'll do better than that. But. Got a wet rag, so don't damage him. See the fly is a nice little bit of nothing really. <laughs> it probably looks like something too. I'm sure it looks like something. So we'll just let him go. Oh, off he goes again. <laughs> I mean I shouldn't complain because that was a magnificent ow. Magnificent fight, and it's still going. It's still got plenty of Plenty of go in it. They're so tough. There's a little tip for new fly rodders. The handles on your fly reel spin around, so when they're spinning, take your hands away, otherwise you get the knuckle duster. <laughs> yeah, I'll extend the net to make it easy for you. Oh, he's a big boy. Oh, he's a pretty big Hawaii, oh, John. Look at that, eh? Hey, beautiful. See, only, only at this time of year, really, in the in the Gulf do we get fish like this. They're just magnificent. Yeah, beautiful. And the you condition, know. he's just so fat. Well, we've got a few snappers, so I think we should let these big boys go and get so, even Adam. bigger. I think so, Adam. And yeah. we're not even touching them in the net. So they're released. You'll be pretty tired. But otherwise, we'll be Off in good he shape. goes. He's in good shape. The fishing did not stop all morning. We just kept chasing the action around, following where the birds were busiest. We're surrounded by kawai. <laughs> I must be getting tired now, because I know I am. This bay is just chock full of bait at the moment. I can, as far as I can see, there's there are rafts of birds and splashing fish on the surface. There's huge clouds of anchovies all pushed up into this blind bay here. See the strong, aren't they? Yeah. And some people might say, well, why are you, you know, you're buggerizing around using a fly rod for kahawai? But this day and age, you know, the, the limits are small and um, you want to have as much fun as you can while you're out fishing. And I'll tell you what, this is fun. Okay. There are four major sorts of small bait fish, wow. anchovy, herring, sprat and pilchard. They can look similar, with the pilchard being the largest. One thing's for sure, all the other fish love to eat them. Pretty much a fisher cast at the moment, this anchovy fishing is just sensational. The sound is lit up. Yeah. <laughs> This feels like a good snapper, this one. There he is. Yeah, that's a, oh, oh, doesn't want to come in. There we go. Nice snapper. Just off the edge. I'm grabbing it. A couple of metres of water, light line, great fun. And I've got my dinner. <laughs> Coming up, tricks for hunting snapper underwater. Beautiful.
One of the things that makes a great spot is the right kind of structure. This is perfect. Today is try and shoot a big moocher snapper day. It's, it's autumn, the water's nice and blue, and it's the right time of the year. The big snapper should be back up into the shallows. So I'm using a Weddy Carbon 120 gun. It's my choice of gun with a reel on it. Perfect for snapper snooping. So I'll take you for a swim along a bit of coast and see what I can find. Having the correct gear makes the job so much easier. Nice soft Weddy suits mean no restriction across your chest or getting cold. Use a black silicone mask rather than clear silicone. Clear silicone lets in too much light and distorts your vision. Hopefully there's an old blind snapper somewhere. Doesn't see me. Enter the water quietly. Take time to settle into your surroundings and see what's going on. There's lots of indicators to look for. Things like current. You want to swim into it, not with it. Fish sit facing into the current. You're the first thing they will spot if you're coming with the current. One of the best burlies to use, especially for snapper, is kinna or sea eggs. Crack them open with your knife and place them in a spot that is easy to sneak up on. Today I've got my weddy staff with me. Jeremy is going to hunt snapper. Erica is sparing for only her second time. Getting fish to feed out of your hands is lots of fun. Watch out they don't bite your fingers though. The brightly coloured fish are Sandager's wrasse, very friendly and non-target species for good sparrows. Snapper often lose all fear when burlies around. Jeremy's wetty sniper suit helps him blend in with the kelp. You've got to have a very sharp eye for snapper. They'll use any sort of cover they can when trying to hide from you. I spotted this one from a long way off. He bolted towards the rock face and hid. Not well enough though. I like to tip them upside down to quieten them down a bit. If they are not well held, this is when you can lose a fish. Blue Mau Mau are very tasty fish. Erica chooses them as her first target. It's a good idea to get to their level for a side on shot. Often fish won't oblige and let you do this though. I use a float line with a drop weight. This means if I find a fish, I can drop the float line and get it away from me while I target the snapper. Free diving for fish gives you an opportunity to use skills you thought you never had. It will teach you how to relax underwater, how to hunt, and generally to give you confidence in the outdoors. It's a great sport for ages young and old. It'll keep you fit and well fed. You need to be aware of your ability when in deep water, making sure you don't overdo it. Gutters are my favourite for snapper. They rest up in spots just like this. Take your time and check them out thoroughly. I've spotted a good fish through a V in the rocks. I need to get down quietly but quickly. It's on the move. I'm using the weed as cover. Make sure of your target. The gun I'm using has a range of around four metres. They're a deadly weapon. You must never load or fire a gun out of the water. While I'm landing this, I spot a big moocher. He's not seen me as the sun is behind me. I have to move fast again without alerting him. You don't want bubbles streaming from your snorkel. Again, I hug the kelp, hiding my approach. The sun's still behind me. This is the perfect approach and a good result. Big snapper do taste good if they're bled and prepared properly. I've got five nice snapper, more than enough for the day. It's back to the boat. In the same area, Erica is still hunting her first fish. She is using a different technique to me, as Blue Mau Mau aren't as wary. You can hunt them out in the open in full view. You've just got to keep your movements to a minimum. Whew. That was a 
was a great swim. Only went for about 40, 50 minutes. And in, uh, it's because it's so early in the morning, the snapper are all right up in the shallows. They're very sleepy. So it's a really good time to hunt them. So I've got five good size snapper. That biggest one there is probably six or seven kilos, I suppose. But the key thing about shooting these things is I'm never in any deeper than about five or six metres of water. They're all shallow. So, my nice moocher snapper, first thing in the morning in autumn. Beautiful. Coming up, Kirk visits one of his top spots. Fantastic. This adventure is a truly solo trip where I'm packing the tent, sleeping gear and food into the wave runner and heading to Great Barrier for an overnighter. My 40 nautical mile journey begins in the Whangapoa Harbour then out through the bar before turning north towards the barrier. I'm returning to a favourite spot X that I know holds big fish so camping on the beach there will allow me to get the early start that I need. As the sun rises on this adventure, I start my quest for a big barrier moocher by setting a burley trail and getting a bait in the water. Burley is an important part of this type of fishing and it didn't take long before fish were in the trail. The beauty of the ski in a location like this is it's got such a small footprint on the water. I say it all the time but such a small footprint on the water. I can see the bottom where I'm fishing. It's only probably four or five metres deep. Water's crystal clear. I can see the bottom. I can see fish swimming down around there. You're probably noticing I'm breaking the pilchards. I've shifted the pilchards. I'm breaking the pilchards in half. Because what I'm finding is the when I throw the whole ones out there, the only thing they get attention from is the rockfish. And they just get the guts nibbled out of them and slowly nibbled away. So I'm going to try just half a, half a pilchard to see if I can't tempt those big ones to just come in and engulf the whole thing. Let's get it out, see what happens. Sometimes a tactic that you think may not work so well can really deliver, and it wasn't long before this one proved its worth. straight away. Yep. Oh, good fish. That's a good fish. That is a nice fish. Drop down to half a pilchard. The whole pilchards seem to be getting picked at. By the rockfish. So I dropped down to half a pilchard and it just, it just came in and swallowed it whole. You'd think big bait, big fish, but not in this case. Oh, it's a nice one. I'm going to need the net. Oh, yeah, he's in the net. Nice. There he is. It's just under four kilos, so about eight pounds, which is a nice fish. Let's try and get a bigger one. trail going. Here we go. Fish on. Oh yeah. Oh. It's 
got some good head shakes to it. I cast a different direction. Instantly, we've got into some action. I was casting into the rocks before. Nothing was happening, so I decided to cast away from the ski. Instantly. Oh. That is a nice fish. Oh yeah, that is a beauty. That is a fabulous Great Barrier Snapper. <laughs> That's what I've come all this way for. My goodness, that is exactly what I've come all this way for. Put all those hours in, do the camping on the beach, get out here early in the morning for one of these absolute magnificent, magnificent fish. I'm gonna put them back in the water and let him free. Oh yeah. And he swam away. Wicked. Fishy Business is proud to support Legacy.